My name is Jay Keck, and I am the Industry Habitat Manager for the South Carolina Wildlife Federation, and... And I'm Beverly Roberts. I'm the Operations and Communications Manager. Hey, but what in the world are we talking about today? So we're talking about the WAIT program today, Jay. All right. Well, good, good. All right, uh, let's get started. <laughs> I'm going to start off by uh, just kind of telling everybody, um, you know, a little bit about who we are. Um, so, you know, we've been around for 92 years, I think, uh, the South Carolina Wildlife Federation. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the acronym below that you see is CARE. Um, so it stands for Con Conservation, Conserve, Advocate, uh, Restore, and then Educate. Um, and here's examples, you know, on this first page of each one. Um, we'll talk about Project Prothonotary in a little bit, but, you know, a form of conservation is simply just installing bird boxes. And that bird yeah, one of the things I learned when I came here is how much habitat loss um, makes a big difference and restoring habitat for wildlife really makes a difference. With yeah, and again, one of the easiest things that our weight partners have have kind of found is, is putting up boxes, you know, and it's very effective too. Um, and so we'll talk about the, the prothonotary warbler in a little bit, um, you know, and then restoration, you know, installing some native plants, um, some pollinator garden, gardens, they work um, and they're extremely effective. Um, and then, uh, you know, the education part is one of our favorite things that we do. And we'll talk about that, you know, and how that fits into corporations. But, you know, one of my favorite things to do is getting into schools. And we've even had, you know, some weight partner sponsor, you know, uh, visits by us in, in local schools in their community. Um, you can see the kaleidoscape window strike prevention. You know, that's another form of conservation. You know, birds see that reflection and they think that that's an area that they can just fly through. Um, and some of our weight partners, you know, have really big issues with birds hitting their windows. And we do have one partner in Greenville that is going to um, put a um, material called Kaleidoscape that will uh, eliminate that reflection right there uh, because of their big bird strike um, issue, you know, at their administrative office. Um, so and when I saw the, the Kaleidoscape that we installed at the library, I was so impressed that um, the view is clear when you look out. Yeah. That so was completely... something I was really impressed by. Oh, it's amazing. I wish I could have seen the people's reactions when they were inside and then went outside yeah. to see the, to, to see the outside of it. But, um, you know, the outside is completely covered, but there's thousands and thousands of holes in it. So while you're inside, you can still see out. Um, they were averaging around 10 to 12 window strike, um, bird strikes deaths per, per month. And ever since we put that material up about 16, 17 months ago, they haven't had one strike. So it does work. And if you do have that issue at, at your facility, you know, please reach out to us. Um, and I, I guess I didn't mention the advocacy part, but, you know, um, the most, one of the most popular ones that have, have kind of has come out over the last couple of years is the, the, the turtle bill. Um, and that basically makes it, you know, illegal to take, um, you know, some of the reptiles in South Carolina out and sell them. Um, so it was, you know, a much needed bill. So we, we support those bills that make sense and are good for humans and wildlife. Um, so that's just a little bit about us. Um, WAIT stands for wildlife and industry together. You know, you look at South Carolina, just Google, you know, the corporations within South Carolina, you'll see how many acres of land are taken up by these corporations that create all sorts of wonderful products for us, right? Um, but there, there is such a great opportunity to support wildlife at all of these locations. Um, so that's what this program is about, just uh, encouraging these uh, property owners, essentially, you know, to provide some habitat for wildlife, um, much of which is in decline, you know, in South Carolina and around the world, you know, on these corporate properties. So you can see the example of just a very simple but beautiful uh, pollinator garden at BMW in the upstate. Um, you see the the folks, usually it's it's uh, employees and their families. They'll get together, um, you know, at the at the offices and build bird boxes. You know, it's a great way to engage the community. Um, Colgate Palm Olive, again, in the upstate, um, they have a lot of property um, and they're creating trails, you know, in some of the more wild areas. But they have this beautiful, you know, you see it right there, reimagined park. Um, and I know it's a lot of turf grass there, but they are planting trees and they um, installed so many bird boxes for, you know, things like bluebirds, tufted titmouse, Carolina chickadees, which are in decline. Um, and then, you know, another example of a garden uh, right here is the Carolina fence garden that uses elements of our, you know, state symbols, you know. 
Um, and that's just, you know, beautifully located position at one of their properties in, in South Carolina. Um, so that's just a little bit about the weight program. Yeah, it seems like the weight programs is perfect opportunity for corporations to use their land to help wildlife. It, it seems it, that's they, how I think of it. And it seems like they really like it too once they once they do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, one of the one of the elements, you know, to become a partner is is just, you know, connecting with the community in, in some way that that supports wet wildlife and and educates. Uh BMW just knocks it out of the park. Um you know, before COVID, you know, they had this huge Earth Day event. Um, hopefully, we'll we'll get that you know going going again. Have, so, have you been to that of, event, Jay? Yes, and there were thousands of people there. They had you know a band. They had food trucks. You know, DNR was there. They you know they even had you know alligators. You know, um, you know it's all safe and everything. But uh -huh. as you can see, I mean, it is just so popular. There's all sorts of you know organizations like us, nature minded organizations that were there. And everybody's got a smile on their face and they're making nature, you know, uh, education, you know, fun. Um, and so it's a really effective way to connecting people, you know, to our planet and teaching them about the things in, in South Carolina. And then those people in turn become conservationists. They have something to care for. Right. Mm -hmm. Um uh, another example, you know, from one of our weight weight partners, Martin Marietta. Um, you know, this was uh, this was uh, a couple of years ago, but we went out to their one of their properties in the Low Country and partnered with another, uh, well, a school, a high school down there, and we took people out. Some of them, you know, it was their first nature walk, you know, through through the right. woods. Um, there were a few people like me, you know, that that have that are specialized in certain areas, um, you know, uh, in in wild in the wild wildlife, and um, you know, they also uh, enabled these folks to to go fishing too. Again, some some you know have never fished before, so to see a 15, 16, 17 year old person, you know, with a smile on their face and getting all giddy, and how we get when we when we catch a fish was really cool to to witness. Um, and then Bridgestone, you know, they have their uh, Bridgestone Environmental Education Program. They call it BEEP. I think that's kind of cute. That's great. <laughs> um, and they're in Aiken and they partner with uh, USC Aiken. And then they have a lot of schools come to their property. They have this beautiful um, outdoor, you know, education building, um, you know, uh, that in which they do their, uh, you know, outdoor education. And it's just, it's, it's a really cool program. Those are just a, a few examples of what you can do if you're interested in, in joining the weight program. Um, you know, partnering with with local schools, you know, I mentioned um, Bridgestone, the, the schools come to their property. Um, there are some other folks, uh, weight partners that have partnered with local uh, schools, you know, in that area. Um, you know, whether that's just kind of sponsoring us to go, um, like we did, you know, Michelin did that um, not too long ago, uh, where I, I went to a school and our snake expert, you know, came with me mm -hmm. and just blew these, you know, middle school, elementary kids minds with all these beautiful snakes, you know, teaching them about it, how they fit into the ecosystem. I'm a bird guy. So I'm showing them pictures of gorgeous birds that they've never seen any before that we have in South Carolina. I'm playing sounds. Everybody's laughing. Everybody's Everybody has a smile on their face. And that's just, you know, one example of, you know, how to partner with the local school in that community. Um, and you can see Colgate right there, too. Um, they partnered with a local elementary school. Um, some of their environmental um, staff will go to that school and do a talk, you know. Um, but they also um, funded a project to where the schools built the boxes um, and then they were able to install the boxes on Colgate's property. Um, so I think I that there are opportunities for people who have property for students to come to them, but there are also opportunities if you're a business to sponsor yep. things, if, even if you don't have that land. I Absolutely. Yeah. You don't have to have a, a land like, you know, most of these, you know, corporations that I'm talking about, you know, have, you, you can have no land and you yeah. can still, you know, participate. Make a difference. You know, we, we can, we can, we can make it work. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Uh, and then, you know, there's also employee education. You, you think about these uh, employers, these big corporations in South Carolina, there are thousands of employees um, and it's a fantastic opportunity for us to convert them into conservationists, make them, you know, 
uh, into conservationists through education, you know, show them that a roseate spoonbill exists, a pink bird that looks like a flamingo here. You know, we have a bird that looks like a purple chicken. It's called a purple gallinule. Most people have no idea these things even exist. So just showing them, you know, that these exist, you know, is a, is a win and does make, I've seen it happen. I'm, you know, I'm an eyewitness, you know, um, it, it happens and these people turn into conservationists once they find out that there's these amazing things to care for. Um, so so one what of the, are some of the examples, Jay, that you've done of lunch and learns with some of these uh, weight partners? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, snakes, um, you know, are always a hot topic. So I've done plenty of lunch and learns, uh, whether that's in person um, and I don't have to bring snakes um, or. But you could. Oh yeah, but I could, um, or through zoom, um, you know, I've, I've talked about birds and, you know, I'm not just pointing out, you know, pretty little birds. I'm, I'm showing pictures of course, but I'm talking about, you know, why they're in decline because most of them are, um, and how you can help them, you know, uh, what, what are the problems? So, uh, lunch and learns can, uh, you know, be focused on, you know, uh, specific, you know, species, you know, like snakes mm -hmm. or birds, it could be a combination. Um, I can do one totally on insects and the plants that support them. <laughs> um, so yeah, they can be in person or they can be on zoom. That's great. Um, you know, some folks uh, will kind of create uh, brochures that they kind of pass around, uh, oftentimes in the lunch area, um, educational signs, um, you know, I, I put at strategic locations, but there, you know, some folks have uh, trails, uh, some of these signs will be, you know, around the lunchroom, uh, nest, nest cams, okay, cameras or game cameras are really popular. Um, I know Honda. I can see why. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I, Honda has actually, you know, they'll have some, they have some game cameras up from time to time and they'll feed it directly into their TVs uh, at, in the lunch area. So people get to see, you know, the bobcats, maybe a coyote, the deer, maybe, you know, a, a, a wild pig, um, you know, pass by other things too, you know, all sorts of other critters out there. That's um, really special because there's so much wildlife we, that's there that we're not always able to see. So. Oh, absolutely. Well, and listen, we're, we're so busy too. You know, you, mm -hmm. you wake up, you, you go to work, you, you come home, you might have kids. I mean, this is something that we don't really think about too often. And you can see that we don't think about it often um, just because of, of, of the, the, the balance in which we're, we're kind of living our lives. And the, you know, in my opinion, maybe some overdevelopment, you know, here and there. So it kind of, um, you know, connects us and we're like, oh, 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 wait, wait, maybe let's do this a different way. So mm -hmm. it, again, really gives us an opportunity to, to educate and hopefully make, you know, have some people fall in love with the, with the outdoors. Yeah. Um, oh, I just wanted to mention too, you know, Honda has an art contest. Um, and they, they get together and they have, they have a pretty big weight team, wildlife and industry together team over there. Um, and they've just really created some really cool, you know, pieces of art. I've seen one, you know, it was like a marsh, you know, had, you know, reeds and, and, a and a heron in it, and it was all made of steel and it was just beautiful. Wow. It's, it's in their lunchroom. So, you That's know, you, cool. you can get, you can get as big, you know, you can make this as big or, or small as you, as you want, but, um, and you can get as creative as you want to. So I thought that was a pretty cool thing that I saw. Um, you know, super easy thing to do um, for a weight partner um, or litter sweeps. Um, we've partnered with, you know, many in the Midlands area and hopefully we'll get them, you know, spreading all, all throughout the, the Carolinas, you know, with, with our weight partners. Um, you can see the number of uh, pieces of trash that we've picked out uh, up here in Irmo. Um, we probably reached almost the 10,000 uh, uh, litter piece mark um, this past year on our second um, litter sweep in that one area. Um, you can see the pictures of the wildlife. Those were both taken in South Carolina, the Anhinga, you know, with plastic around its bill. The, so that um, really shows how wildlife are affected by litter. Uh, is affected. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's not just picking up litter. That's, I mean, that's obviously a very critical thing that we need to do. But you also need to know that it affects wildlife. I mean, if you've never seen, if you've never been to the South Carolina Aquarium, go down there, go to their turtle hospital and look at the x-rays of turtles and ever all the plastics that they've eaten. Uh, look at, they probably have pictures of birds too that that have been found with, with all sorts of plastics within them. 
Um, and then even water snakes, you know, for the folks that don't like snakes, I, I, I get, I, I understand, um, but it affects them too. And when we take snakes out of the, uh, out of the, the equation, you know, we're taking out all sorts of food for birds, for mammals, for re other reptiles, even amphibians, like a bullfrog will eat snakes. So, you know, that wow. snake right there has a little, you know, that little ring under a bottle cap, you know, around it, uh, which it was found by a snake lover, Parker, and he was able to cut that off and the snake was, you know, able to then survive. Um, so, so I went on my first litter sweep with you last year or this past year. And I think what I was impressed by was what a big impact you can make in just like two hours. I mean, it's the time commitment was relatively condensed. Oh, yeah. No, I, I'm glad that you said that. Um, and then we also use that app through the South Carolina State Aquarium. Yeah, and I'll say about something about that. You you were saying the big impact in two hours with yeah. the number of items that you pick up, but uh -huh. then we are recording every single item. And then when people actually see that number in one sweep in two hours that they almost picked up 4,000 people uh, or 4,000 pieces of trash, like, I don't know if you remember their reactions, but people start getting upset <laughs> and yeah. they're just like, oh my gosh, I had no idea. Like, how many times have we heard that? I had no idea there was this much trash. Um, so, you know, again, we're, we're in our little bubbles. Oftentimes we're so busy, um, but the weight program kind of offers the, the opportunity for us to, to just kind of slow down, look around and notice like all these challenges. Uh, one of them, you know, being, you know, litter in our, in our, in our state. And I and guess so you probably have locations that you could suggest, but weight partners could suggest a location for a little oh, yeah. pick up too. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. I don't want to create, you know, too much work for y'all. So if, if, if you ever do need a, a, a location, you know, we can we can do the investigation, <clears throat> talk to some locals, you know, and where, wherever you are in the state and we can find a safe um, and littered location for you to clean. OK, sounds good. <laughs> um, we have this really cool uh, challenge that we just started last year. Uh, it's called Plishing. <laughs> Um, you know, it started out in Europe, but, uh, you know, it, it's, it made its way over here, but, um, you know, I, I like to explain it as picking up litter and fishing. So plishing, we just combine the two. Um, so the plishing challenge and, uh, basically it's, it's just, um, trying to encourage sportsmen or sportswomen, you know, to go out while they're fishing, um, having a great time doing, you know, uh, catching the fish, but, um, also picking up and noticing the litter that you see, you know, while you are fishing. So, um, it's just kind of making it part of your practice when you're fishing to like absolutely. Let her pick it up. Yeah. And remember, you know, I'm a fisherman too. I, you know, I grew up on Lake Murray. I spent a ton of time fishing. And when you're, when you're a fisherman, you go from point A to point B to C, D, D, and mm -hmm. you're not really, you know, you're, you're paying attention. You're, you're focused on that, that species that you're going after. Right. Mm -hmm. And so this, this is, a, again, the point is to kind of pay attention, you know, notice, notice the things that are, mm -hmm. you know, are going on that are negative, negatively impacting not only wildlife, but us too. So, um, you know, it, it's fantastic. We doubled, I think, our registrants um, this okay. year from, from last year. I think we were in 14 states. There's people from 14 states that are participating participating in this right now to just see how it's grown in just one year <laughs> it's awesome yeah. so i'm hoping that you know weight partners will start doing this more and more and maybe even have a competition within the competition between mm -hmm. you know weight folks see who can pick up the most uh trash see who can you know uh catch the most fish but it is sponsored by palmetto state armory um they give out 500 dollars gift cards three of them uh one for the i think the most fish or biggest fish i can't remember mm -hmm. most one fish, the, I think. biggest fish okay then one for the most trash picked up and then there's a random winner as well and there's other sponsors you know throughout the three months um in which this challenge is kind of completed but it starts in june so it's june july and it ends in august so it's about to wrap up you know here in, in 2023 um so that's the pollution challenge uh and if you ever have any questions you know feel free to give give us a call um and then Project Prothonotary, you know, this bird has declined 30% in the last 50 years because of habitat loss. Um, you can see all the partners that, um, you know, we've kind of leaned on, you know, to get this done. But we've put up, again, over four, 500 boxes for this bird in decline. It's the only warbler uh, east of the Rocky Mountains that nests in cavities. 
Um, and so snags, dead trees that are still standing um, are usually taken down uh, just because of the safety issue. So just putting up a box for this species can can replace that removed uh, habitat, you know, and, and potential nesting site for that bird. Um, you do have to have the right property, which is water and large trees. You can you can see the the, the picture right there of a box that was used. Um, so, you know, it's a fantastic initiative, a uh, fantastic project. And if you do have the right uh, uh, property, um, please consider putting up boxes for that bird. So this seems like such a great way, an easy way for white partners to do something for wildlife. But if they don't have the right mm -hmm. habitat, Yep. What's another example of something they could do on their property for wildlife? Sure, sure. Hey, uh, not to stay on the bird thing, but since we're talking about them um, and nest boxes, you know, if you don't have any water, um, uh, you know, put up bluebird boxes. You know, that bird has bounced back the last 50 years because of folks all over, you know, North America putting up boxes for that spectacular blue bird, the eastern bluebird. Um, screech owls are in decline, you know, tiny owls, you know, not too much bigger than, you know, a, a bottle of water, you know, um, th you can put up boxes for those, uh, wood ducks. If you do, you know, have a pond or two, it, it's probably not going to be great for a prothonotary, um, or adequate for a prothonotary, but, you know, wood ducks are pretty, um, uh, adaptable to, to those types of small ponds, retention ponds that are on, uh, you know, a lot of our white partners properties, you know, create a, a brush pile, you know, super simple, create a brush pile. If you take some trees down, you know, by, by required, you know, on your property, maybe just leave them. Um, all and what that, does that do? Create oh my a brush gosh. It, hey, listen, it provides so much food for, you know, wildlife um, that, that those logs are going to decompose. You're going to get awesome beetles, like look up stag beetles and triceratop beetles and Eastern Hercules beetles. Those are food for bats, which are in decline. Um, mm -hmm. so the larva is going to eat those and decompose, help de decompose those logs. So that brush pile or the log pile, whatever you want to call it, is going to be fantastic for wildlife. It's going to support all sorts of insects, which in turn support amphibians, reptiles, mammals, and birds. Um, you know, that seems like a really easy thing to do. It is a very easy thing. <laughs> so again, it's not only about, you know, helping the birds out, but, uh -huh. you know, uh, it's it's about helping everything out. And so yeah. that's one way to do it. Super easy, you know, a brush pile. But, you know, those those pollinator gardens um, help. Uh, I mean, you know, we, we created one in, in Chapin after getting a, a, a grant from uh, from Dominion. And, you know, I've seen probably 12 different types of bird species feeding on the insects that are feeding on the native plants that we um, have uh, installed over there. So, so it's like it's all connected, Jay? What? It is all connected. <laughs> <laughs> it is, you know, and you can have that domino effect when you don't have the insects, you know, well, then you don't have that yeah. frog that's eating the insects. Well, then you don't have that green heron that flew up here from the tropics to eat that frog that was eating the insects. And depending on the size of the, the green heron, you might not have, you know, that you know, alligator or, you know, what maybe a big bird, bird of prey that might predate upon that green heron, you know, so it, it is all connected and you do have those domino effects. Um, I mean, they're, they're a real thing when you don't provide that habitat for wildlife. Um, you know, one of, one of the, the coolest things about South Carolina, when we're talking about nature and, and wildlife that we have is, you know, arguably we have the largest roost of purple martins in North America, which I just think that's such a cool little feather to have in our, in our cap. Right. Um, but it's on, it's on Lake Murray. Okay. It's, it's on a uh, bomb Island, which does have some world war II um, significance history there. Um, so you might want to look that up. But, um, you know, that bird's decline, you know, 25% that you can see in the, in the last 50 years, um, you know, just putting up purple martin racks. Um, they only nest in man-made uh, nest boxes or, you know, gourds like this east of the Rockies. Okay, so they need our help at, at this point. Um, so you might go out to Bomb Island on Lake Murray and see probably 100,000, maybe even more purple martins. Every single one that you're seeing nested in a man-made box east of the Rockies. Um, so just just kind of an incredible you know th thing to wrap your head around. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> there's a there's a fellow from South Carolina, Zach Steinhauser that that film uh, it took him five years, but he uh, made a documentary called Purple Haze. Um, that's 
possibly something that you could show your employees and your employees uh, families one day. So just a just an idea um, and just a just a way to connect with one of the coolest events that we have in our state in the summertime, the Purple Martin Roost on Lake Murray. Um, you know, here's a picture from Bomb Island. Um, I, I do believe this one's from Vance Solseth, a, a local Lexington uh, photographer who's very talented, as you can see, or it might be from Zach Steinhauser, too. Um, but, you know, think about sponsoring um, a school to go out and see the Purple Martins. I'm telling you, if you've never gone, you're going to see hundreds of thousands of birds, one of the best sunsets that you've ever seen in just this beautiful, beautiful setting. And just think of what y'all could do to connect these kids to nature. And, and hopefully the kids are chaperones, there's teachers, you know, you're going to be connecting, you know, not only the kids, but the adults that are with them to this amazing spectacle that's happening and, you know, hopefully make some conservationists out of them. So there's, there's large boats that, that go out um, that can be rented. Um, and uh, just, I don't know, it's just an opportunity for, for, um, uh, one of our weight partners to kind of uh, practice the element of uh, education, right? And community engagement. And then, you know, this is a, this is another picture on, on Lake Murray. We're, you know, we're in the Midlands and, and I know Vance and he's one of the best photographers that I have. And he sent me this picture and it just kind of blew me away. Um, but there's some geese flying over an Island, you know, with a lot of fog on the Lake Murray, but you know, it just kind of shows you, it captures that, oh yeah, earth is a gift, right? I mean, just look at this. Like, how does that picture make you feel? Um, and so, you know, just knowing that it's a gift, you know, reminds us that, you know, we need to take care of it. So, um, you know, all the corporations that are here wouldn't be here without our, out our planet. You know, one of the ways that you can give back, you know, you're, you're producing all sorts of things that, that we use, I use every day, this computer, <laughs> my car, <laughs> you know, the electricity. Um, but you do own property. You know, you are in a community. You can enhance that um, property for wildlife. You know, you are taking up space, right, to produce the things that we use. But there, is, there are locations on your property that you can enhance for wildlife. Um, and there is a community that can be educated in hopes that they become, you know, conservationists and better stewards of our earth. And that's, you know, that's one of the, 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 the points of the weight program. So I'm convinced, Jay, I think the weight program sounds amazing, <laughs> but uh, what would you say to someone who might be a little nervous about getting started or kind of what first steps would be like, what would you say to them about that? Yeah, well, listen, we're, I'm always here as a resource. Um, and, you know, you could talk to our edu um, executive director as well, Sarah Green. Um, but, you know, some people, you know, might be nervous, you know, in creating wildlife habitat. Um, you know, just start with small, small projects. Um, you know, because you're, um, you know, creating a pollinator garden doesn't mean your campus is going to be overrun with, you know, wasps and bees. You're going to have, you know, a lot of pollinators, most of which are going to be solitary and uh, which, which means they're going to be very docile. Um, and I've been doing this for 10 years. My hands are in flowers all the time, you know, at these pollinator gardens. I've never been bothered by a, um, you know, any, any flying critter. Um, they're there to get the pollen or nectar. Um, they they don't care about me. Um, so I would just say, take it slow, um, start small if, if things are overwhelming and just know that, um, you know, when, when you create wildlife, uh, habitat, um, you know, you're, you're not, in, uh, creating a dangerous environment for, for anybody on your campus. Um, you know, you're, you're going to create a, a beautiful environment for wildlife and hopefully a place that's beautiful for us. Um, that's going to connect your employees, you know, to this planet and again, make them conservationists. So um, if you ever have any concerns, just give me a call and, and we yeah. can talk it out. Yeah. So if they have any questions about where to put that brush pile, you can tell them. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't put it in front of the front door, of course, you know. Right. Uh, so, <laughs> right. Right. So, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so we, we can talk, I can help you out with that. And I don't okay. know if it would be help, helpful, but my my email address is uh, jay at scwf dot org. So jay at scwf dot org. And then my phone number is 803-315. 4336 if you want to give me a call. Well, thank you. I think that answers my question. All right. Join the weight program. Call us if you